So number 10 then from the 2015 Advanced Higher Maths. There we are. Integration by parts, 5 marks. Should be fairly straightforward, apart from two things. You notice it's got an x squared, which means you'll be going through it twice, and it's actually got limits in it. It's a definite integral. You find the exact value. Oh, that could be a bit of a pace, because in addition to having to go through all of this, I'll have to keep putting the evaluation brackets in. Unless, of course, you don't. Just evaluate it at the end, say writing that in. So the main thing with integration by parts is deciding which one will you differentiate, which one will you integrate. You'll differentiate the one which will eventually disappear. So differentiate the first term and integrate the second part of that product. Now you may well identify them with the u's and v's at the side, so do that if you wish, and then do your differentiation and integration there and pop them back in. However, the pattern is fairly straightforward. You can just establish it here. So, it's an integration, integrate first, so e. e to the 4x simply goes back to e to the 4x, but divide by the inner derivative 4, so that'll be a quarter of it. This one waits. Then, that one's been done, it's had its turn, so it just waits now, whilst you differentiate this one, and that goes to 2x. Now, gone to the marking scheme, that's the first mark for knowing and using integration by parts. There's also a second mark which says an appropriate choice for u and v dashed and correct application. Well, I've not stated any u's or v dashed, but that would mean deciding which one you differentiate and which one you integrate and applying it properly. So I claim the second mark here. It's just I don't see the need for doing that at the side. Oh, well, hello, Maxwell. Indeed. I thought I would just butt in and add that it is just an algorithm after all. The same as the product rule and the quotient rule. And of course, the product rule is the root of the two of them. And that by simply spelling out the components at the side and then reinserting them doesn't imply any understanding of the underlying algorithm. In fact, it makes it look, to me anyway, more rote than it of course actually is. And in fact, obscures the simple symmetry of this and the other two algorithms. I agree. I'll continue to keep an eye on you. Well, an unexpected little FaceTime call there from the esteemed Maxwell McSphincter. So, continuing with that then, that would be one quarter of x squared e to the 4x minus, now this part, tidy it up first. I've got two times a quarter, which is a half of x e to the 4x dx. And then you decide again, I'll differentiate that, and I'll integrate that. So that continues, here we go again, 1 quarter e to the 4x, those wee dittos would have been handy, minus a half of, now just do this again. So what have we got? Integrate first, I've already done it, that was 1 quarter of e to the 4x, that weights, now, that's been done, so it was a quarter of e to the 4x, and this gets differentiated down to 1 dx. That's the third mark for the second application for doing it again. Now we just need to tidy it up again, and here it gets written down again. A quarter of x squared e to the 4x, minus, and that'll be an eighth of x e to the 4x, and that'll be plus an eighth of the integral, I'll we'll have to take a bit off of you, I'm afraid, the integral of e to the 4x dx. Almost there, and writing it down one more time, probably would have had to pop it back in now if I'd been using dittos. So these two terms have already been established, they've already been precipitated out of the integration, and they're just floating about at the bottom of the solution, so what have we got? And that again will be e to the 4x divided by 4, so that'll be 1 upon 32. I need to take a bit off of you. e to the 4x, and strictly speaking I should put plus c, since I can finally introduce the constant that was kind of popping out of the various integrations. But now it's been fully integrated, plus c. Still not the fourth mark though. Of course, if I'd been using the evaluation brackets, there would be no mention of C. 
But now I can do the evaluation. So what is the integral from 0 to 2 of x squared e to the 4x dx? It will be, now I'll evaluate this expression, but I think I'll tidy it up first. So you look through the three terms for anything they've got in common, that's the e to the 4x, and the worst of the fractions, that'll be the 32. So e to the 4x over 32 times. So I still need, that'll have to be an 8 for the x squared. Dividing that in, that'll be a minus 4x for that term, but that'll just be plus 1. This gets evaluated from 0 to 2. Still not the fourth mark, because it says the fourth mark's for the final integral, which was this thing, and substitute in the limits. So I've not actually substituted them in yet. So here we go. So we've got e to the, that'll be 8 over 32 times, that's 4 times 8 is 32, minus 4 times 2 is 8, plus 1, minus, and that'll be e to the 0 over 32, times, that'll be 0, that'll be 0, and that'll just be 1. Almost there, so you've got 32, 33, take away 8 is 25, so you've got 25 upon 32 e to the 8 minus, and that's just 1 over 32. Now, putting the fourth mark here, it said final integration and substitute in limits, means that this final answer, you immediately get another mark just for a tiny bit of arithmetic. So you can either have that, or I think I'll tidy it up because I've still got this, these common fractions. I think I'll tidy that up to take out the worst of the fractions. That's 1 upon 32. And that leaves you with 25e to the 8 minus 1. That's a better looking answer. I'll have that as my exact answer. Although that would do.